meme review. We now have the largest graphics card in the entire world, unveiled by NVIDIA at GTC. GTC, of course, is the GPU technology conference that NVIDIA is hosting right now. The keynote happened today, except for this video is releasing tomorrow. So it happened yesterday for you people who are watching, or much earlier in the past, or later in the past. Time is a weird dynamic. Anyways, you, you're, you could be watching this a few weeks or months or years from now. Comment when you're watching this down in the comments. Anyway, smash the like button as well while you're down there. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Getting to the point, we now have the largest GPU in the world, released by NVIDIA, and it comes with, here, here, let me just read off the specs for you, and then I'll tell you what it is. It has 512 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, 81,920 CUDA cores, two petaflops of performance, and draws 10,000 kilowatts and costs a mere $400,000. What does that sound like to you? That sounds like a lot of money, a lot of graphics card power, and it's actually just 16 Tesla V100s in a giant server rack that are connected through a new technology that NVIDIA is calling NV Switch, which is like the NV links that already exist on the Volta platform, but instead of just connecting two cards together, it actually connects 16 cards with super low latency to perform like like on an unreal scale than we've ever seen. Like it weighs 350 pounds and it's two petaflops of performance, replacing some of the most massive supercomputers that exist in the world today. Fantastic by NVIDIA. I am so insanely like blown away by this. Like it, it, it's just absolutely banana hammocks to think how massive this PC is. And honestly, $400,000 doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot to get one of the fastest supercomputers in the world. Like that, that sounds like if you saved up for a few millennia, you could actually afford it. That, that's something that, that, that tickles my fancy. But that's not the only GPU announcement that NVIDIA had at the GTC conference because of course they, that's, that's not it. So this massive piece of a computer is gonna be called the NVIDIA DGX-2, this two petaflop absolute supercomputer in a box. Basically, it looks like a monitor stand. Like you can take it on road shows with you. That, that, it, I mean, it just basically looks like it should be with a band. NVIDIA Garage Band, Apple and NVIDIA confirmation. They're dropping AMD. It all makes sense. The conspiracy theory is confirmed. 100%. I'm going with that one. They're actually taking the Titan V and they're actually doubling. My bad. They're not taking the Titan V. The Titan V is staying the same. It just launched. Anyways, the Tesla V100, which also just technically launched, is getting an upgrade to 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which is why 16 of them can produce 512 gigabytes of HBM2 memory and not 256. They're doubling the Tesla V100's memory capacity, which is a really interesting thing that, you know, not even a year into the product's life cycle, they're just completely refreshing it. They don't have a new architecture that they're bringing out as far as has been announced so far, but they, they're actually just completely, you know, just giving giving a little bit more for people who want to buy it right now. But then not only, not only was there the Tesla V100 update in the DGX2, we will now be seeing a Quadro version of Volta in the form of the GV100, which NVIDIA had a demonstration showing off two of them using NVLink 2, which means that their HBM2 memory can be used as a fabric, as they called it. And it's the same thing with the NV switch. So this is one of the things that I thought was really interesting. Was just, so they said on stage that it's, it's not, you know, it's not a memory connection, it's a memory fabric. Because AMD has Infinity Fabric, so of course, NVIDIA has to come out with their own fabric of their own, but they haven't officially labeled it anything yet, but totally, I guarantee you, they're gonna make it proprietary and you're gonna have to pay extra for it. So that's that's the guarantee with NVIDIA. Whereas NVIDIA fabric comes new, it comes free. It's everything that you need it to be. It's gonna work with the CPU and the GPU and everything's gonna be good when they get to that, when they refresh Vega and Ryzen and maybe even Navi, we'll have to see. Anyway, so the GV100 Quadro card has 32 gigabytes of HBM memory, 5,120 CUDA cores and 200, or sorry, 118 teraflops of tensor core performance, which in case you're wondering, basically means that it has over double the amount of Titan V HBM2 memory. It comes in at 32 gigs versus the 12 gigabytes, right? 
So it has 20 more gigabytes of HBM2 memory. It basically looks like it has the same uh, teraflops performance in, in the Tensor cores because the Titan V has 110 teraflops, whereas the GV100 has 118, and then it has the same exact amount of CUDA cores. The things that you're going to be paying more for, I presume this is probably going to be a five to ten thousand dollar card somewhere in that region, if I had to guess. The things that you're paying for there are the 20 extra gigabytes of HBM2 memory, but then also the fact that you have NVLink working on it, whereas in the Titan V, it has the NVLink fingers, which it gave us an indication that they're going to be producing a card that uses NVLink. You have the NVLink fingers actually active on the Quadro graphics card, which means that they can communicate using their Infinity Fabric technology. That's what I'm calling it, NVIDIA, until you come up with a catchy name for it. It's an Infinity Fabric on NVIDIA. That's what I'm going with. So. Basically, you're getting a little extra tensor core performance. You're you're basically paying for NVLink and more HBM2 memory. The, the, the other performance is gonna be basically the same to a Titan V. So if you need a single card, it looks like Titan V is gonna be the way to go. Although there's been uh, a little speculation as to whether or not those are even good for scientific computing. I'm gonna leave that link in the video description. I'm not queued up on scientific learning or, you know, applications that actually use it and whether or not how to verify all of that i have no idea so i'm just going to leave the link for your curiosity if you want to learn more about that just something just something to throw out there hopefully the gv100 will be a little bit better at that hopefully it's like a software and hardware or like a firmware issue and not necessarily like it's baked into the volta hardware because like the v100s apparently do fine so i would assume the gv100s the quadro cards are going to do fine as well the Titan V should be doing well, but it just doesn't. Anyways, that's that's not in my wheelhouse. That's above my pay grade. I'm not gonna not gonna quote on that. But unfortunately, in the keynote that happened at GTC, we did not get any news as far as I as far as when I'm recording this video. Who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? Because it is it is 10 p.m. on March 27th, and so the GTC is happening the 28th and the 29th. So by the time you guys see this video, they may have announced new gaming cards, but they haven't done it as far as when I'm recording this video. So that means that there's no news on Ampere, there's no news on Turing, there's no news on whether or not we're going to be having uh, Volta come to the des desktop market and then we're not calling it anything different. We just, we have no idea. There was some news today that n instead of the GTX 20 series, it's been confirmed that it's going to be the GTX 11 series, which is something that I was saying from the beginning, especially in my live streams, I didn't really put in any of the videos, just the fact that why would they call it 20? It made no sense. I was agreeing with everybody who was commenting on it, but so many people were calling it the 20 series that I just kind of was like, okay, I'll, I'll call it both the 11 and 20 series just to catch everybody in the wide net of naming schemes that might be apparent with, with just stupidity. It's, it's just all, it's all stupid. Naming skeeds aside, except for not aside, because it's also been confirmed, freaking rumors everywhere, it's been confirmed that they're not gonna be naming it the same ways that they've been naming the Pascal cards, or even previously in, in the vein of GTX 1080. So this GTX 11 series would not be 1180, it's going to be something different. It could be 1173, it could be 1122, it could be 11 1123.62. Who knows what it's gonna be? Not me, because I just read rumors and I speak to you guys about them. It's all an interesting game that's going on. Uh, I would encourage you guys definitely check out NVIDIA's keynote. It's super interesting, even if you have no interest in deep learning, if you have no interest in AI, if you have no interest in, what's it called? Cars, cars driving themselves, autonomous cars. If you have no interest in autonomous cars, it's still kind of interesting from an architectural standpoint and as like a technology standpoint, just to kind of understand how NVIDIA's process goes for developing these new technologies and then also where they see the world going and what they're trying to develop their technologies for, both you know using it for hospital imaging by having like an image, like a GPU uh, central data, uh, central server, and then also with like autonomous car driving, like that's gonna be a big thing that's coming out, even with the death that happened with the, you know, autonomous Uber. Like there, there's tons of advancements that are happening at GTC that they are talking about that will become the wave of the future that we just kind of aren't ready for yet, but like are definitely in the works right now and there is nothing we can do to prevent it. The only thing that we can really do is be informed about it and discuss it. And so I would highly encourage you guys to check out the GTC uh, keynote speech. It should be up on NVIDIA's uh, YouTube page. I had to watch it through uh, Joker uh, production 
Auction's live stream uh, went his replay. So thank you so much, Joker, for, for doing that because it allowed me to see it, even though it's not up on their YouTube page. And since I was driving from Florida to the middle of freaking America today, I had no time to watch it when it was actually happening. So thank you, Joker, for putting that out. Much appreciated. But I encourage you guys to go watch it as well. Um, and hopefully we get more news on what's going on with the gaming GPUs coming out uh, either tomorrow, today, if you're watching this, the 28th or 29th of March. Hopefully we have more information. I think that's going to wrap it up for me, though, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Thanks. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with me while I'm on the road. Everything is just cray-cray. It's hectic. It's bananas. It's absolutely just like Dr. Dr. Robotnik. Why was I going to say that? It's like Dr. Robotnik, okay? It's just, it just doesn't make any sense, okay? He's egghead. But I appreciate everybody's support. We hit 100 thousand subscribers i've got nothing planned for it because i've been on the road for for the past five six weeks now and it's just been absolutely draining i will do something special uh when i have some time to sit down which hopefully will be you know next week that's that's the goal is next week i'll actually be able to sit down and work on a plan for celebrating hundred thousand subscribers guys thank you so much get subscribed i'll see you all in the next video cheers